Okay, Hero's Tale and Air of the Dragonfly. Well, let's reverse that. Air of the Dragonfly was chronologically first, and, well, it was released first. And then in Hero's Tale. These are two games I wanted to do reviews on with footage and such, but instead I'm, you're going to have to sell for me rambling on them. Let's start with Air of the Dragonfly so we can get the bad out of the way. Or most of the bad. A lot of people, I can understand why people think a Hero's Tale is kind of bad, but I'll try to give it a little more credit, I suppose, considering we have two different people here. The people who did Air of the Dragonfly were, I believe, ugh, Infocom, or, eh, let's see. Either way, they weren't the, never mind, I believe Eurocom was the one that actually, no, it was Eurocom, I think. And the ones who made a Hero's Tale were, maybe I'm getting mixed up. A Hero's Tale was Eurocom, and then, eh, it doesn't even matter. It's very, very complex in regards to that sort of thing, because of the fact that, well, that's what was happening at that point, that things were uh, shifting hands a lot because of Insomniac and Universal being separated for, I don't know what reason it was, but they, they separated. And obvious things happened, like, well, Insomniac was pretty much out of business, so they had to sell the Spiral property, and luckily they eventually sold them to Good Studios, or shifted hands to Chrome Studios, which I believe is also well known for making Tie the Tasmanian Tiger, but initially, yes, it was, uh, I think it was Info, Gra Info Games, or, darn it, I, I know it begins with an I for the producer, publisher for Air of the Dragonfly, but Air of the Dragonfly, to start off, is just awful. There's not really much of a redeeming quality for it because of the fact that, well, there are, I mean, the GameCube version is supposed to be better, but admittedly, I've only played the PS2 version because it's the only thing I could buy because we don't have a GameCube anymore. But I'm not going to completely knock Air of the Dragonfly. I mean, storyline-wise, it's the best thing I could find for it, that you're trying to propose something different. Ripto survived, for example. He, uh, well, yeah, technically that's the weird part. He really shouldn't be alive. That's one of the storyline things that makes people confused. This guy fell in lava. And, well, he's not the sorceress, so he's not going to get out of that. But somehow he got resurrected or whatever, and he disrupted the party where they were giving dragonflies to new dragons. New dragonflies to new dragons. Anyway, the point of the matter is they steal the dragonflies and you have to rescue them. And I'm thinking, yeah, I had something of an idea like this, except I didn't bring in Ripto. But then again, I didn't really have any idea for the antagonist at that point, so I was just saying, I was trying to discern collectibles. Dragonflies? Okay, let's do that. Because it works. I, to, I didn't really have an idea of how it was going to go, but dragonflies were a part of the equation. Unfortunately, with Air of the Dragonfly, there were a few things that were already missing. One of them was, there wasn't really a significant creativity with the bosses. Supposedly, you just fought Ripto two or three times in different levels of his power. He, supposedly, I remember the first battle that I went through, he had was, he had some different spells, he enhanced himself with some steroids or something, that sort of thing, but there wasn't much to say in regards to different boss battles. I mean, a Hero's Tale did much better with that, but I'll get to that quickly. But with Air of the Dragonfly, it's also incomplete least, or they had to really rush it. They wanted to have 120 dragonflies in about 25 worlds, I think. Or maybe let's go with 20. Either way, they cut the number of worlds over by over half. There's only 9. And they cut the dragonflies by about a third. There's only uh, 90. And then we get to the bigger problems that I've actually experienced. The graphical glitches are there. You will glitch through shit. There is there are sound issues. It's, the uh, music will just disappear. It's not it's not even just because of the disc. It's because of just issues with reading the disc. I'm venturing just in general. Even if you have the thing brand spanking new, you're gonna have problems with apparently the laser reading it, and you'll just have the music clock out or something. Not to mention there are times when it crashes, and it will crash a lot. 
you'll crash the most inopportune times. You'll be almost done with the level. And then you'll leave, and then the loading screen will fucking crash, and you'll have to restart the thing and do it again. Not to mention that's one of the things they're commonly complained about is the loading times. All in all, I'm not going to recommend this game. And the only way I would is if they took a year or two to remake it. And they haven't, so don't hold your breath. Now, Hero's Tale, the storyline involves one of the Elder Dragons named Red. Very creative name there. He was banished. And now he's come back and he has some friends, including Nasty Nork. Now, this makes a little more sense. Nasty Nork didn't fall in lava. He could be resurrected, or rather recruited, to someone else's team because he's just sitting there. Then again, the Spire of the Dragon ended with dragons turning to crystal again, so I guess all the more reason Nasty Nork should really be in one of the original series' final games, and this was the final game I've played anyway. Now, one of the bigger complaints about this game is not is uh, probably a tie between the fact that it's a very childish game. I mean, it's the tutorial system is even more tedious because you have to collect a certain number of gems in order to learn crap. It's terrible. But I guess it's so systematic that you have to really think this is made for much younger gamers. And of course, one of the most common things throughout, even Air of the Dragonfly, I believe, was that square button was to charge for charging attacks and circle button was for flaming. In Heroes Tale, they reversed it. I didn't like that initially, but it's not something you can't adjust to because you're going to be playing this long enough and you're going to be using these things creatively enough that eventually you're just going to say, okay, I get this. The difficulty is, of course, when you're trying to shift between Spyros. But if it's the only Spyro game you're ever going to play, well, it shouldn't be a problem because you're not going to have the experience in the back of your head that, hey, they've switched these things. Oh, well. Now... I, like I mentioned, the boss diversity is pretty good. You fight Nasty Nork first, and then you... What is it? You fight... I believe her name is like Nep, Neptuna, Neptune. It it does involve a water imagery, and she's just basically this giant Medusa mermaid-looking bitch. And Well, you just, ironically, just ram her on the belt buckle. It's weird. And then you fight... Uh, I'm not sure. I think you might just fight Red once. But... The game is not so painfully easy that you can do it in your sleep. It is somewhat challenging, but then again, I'm not the best gamer, so it might not be the best example to use. But I've beaten the game twice, and I've actually gotten a better score the second time around. I mean, it's a completion thing. You can get 100% if you get everything. I mean, the difficulty for me is remembering the collectibles, because I believe you get dragon eggs, but they're different dragon eggs. They have different patterns. It's actually a nice change. You also get, uh, you're destroying dark crystals. Is a, It's actually an interesting change that they've done. You manage to have something that you actually get rid of in order to advance and open up new areas, that sort of thing. Not to mention, Spyro does get these multiple breath types. Electricity, water, ice, they use those sorts of things. But, and, uh, I'm looking at the Wikipedia page at present, but... Unfortunately, I am uh, not finding it. I think the other collectible is a something involving rainbows, rainbow crystals, let's call them that. Let's say rainbow crystal, or rainbow gems, something like that, which is stunningly similar to Tithe Tasmanian Tiger Wonders, but you can't, you collect, uh, what was it, rainbow shells or something, but admittedly, they're much more of a minority. This game, yeah, you're supposed to be collecting those damn things. And there's a lot. Oh, it was, it was a Neptune. That was her name. Anyway. Continuing on. Oh, light gems. I was wrong. Sorry. You have the imagery of rainbows, though, but they're called light gems. In contrast to the dark gems that you head bash or run into or whatever to destroy them. Now, the tricky part of this game is that, yeah, they actually do... Uh, change a lot of things. You can actually uh, kind of wall jump and you can swing on poles. But I think a lot of people would actually like Hero's Tale because of the fact that you can actually play as Hunter. But anyway, I'm running out of time here, I see. You also get another helper called, like, what was it? Blink the Mole. 
surprisingly similar to Blinks the Cat from a failed series called Blinks the Time Sweeper. Anyway, all I can say about a Hero's Tale is don't go into it thinking, hey, this is going to be exactly like the other ones, because it's not, because it wasn't even made by the same people. It was made by Eurocom, I believe. If I'm checking this quickly, uh, yes, Eurocom, and Air the Dragonfly was Insomnia. Uh, I'm getting mixed up here. Uh, Equinox Digital Entertainment, a very unknown gaming developer. Anyway, I've gone over 10 minutes, but it's not like it's going to really ruin it. I just have to stop before 10.59. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this, and there's only going to be a couple of pictures. But, yeah. I would say A Hero's Tale is vastly superior to an Air of the Dragonfly in the fact that though there's no glitches, really, there's no possibility of it crashing. And overall, it's made by a better company, Eurocom. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this uh, slightly imbalanced ramble, but I'm quickly entering, ending this. See you later.